Right, what we have here is um, four servos, obviously, and I can work them individually um, by moving four separate sticks on the transmitter. Now, the reason I'm uh, making this video is this, someone's asked about the possibility of taking a CCPM signal and splitting it into separate servos. So this little uh, orange receiver, an R617XL, it's only got a CCPM output. And you can see I'm using a, a DigiSpark here to split the uh, split that CPPM signal, combined pulse position, into um, four separate PWM outputs for the uh, for the four servos which you can see I'm working now and it's all pretty glitch free and perfect so I'll just show you um, next I'll disconnect everything and show you the um, show you the digi spark next so this is the uh, digi spark we're using which has got an AT tiny 85 on it and you can see alongside the um, the normal outputs which are labelled uh, P0, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 along that way I've put a row of red pins and a row of black pins and the red pins are all common together on the back and so are the black pins and the red goes round to um, uh, VCC or is it labelled VCC or 5 volts on these things? 5 volts and the black pin goes around to ground arguably depending on which um, sort of receiver battery or ESC you're using you might be better to connect the the uh, red pins to uh, V in I think it's labelled uh, there's arguments both ways if you're sure that it's never going to be able 5 volts then the 5 volt pin's the best one to connect it to. If you think it could go up to 6 or 7 volts, then you're better connecting it to um, um, V in. So, um, where the connection, once you've got these two rows of pins, um, then you've got effectively uh, six sort of servo type connectors. And what I had connected before was the receiver connected to the P0 and then the first servo for the first channel was connected to P1 and then P2, P3, P4. Uh, P5 is where I was plugging the battery in. Um, now DigiSparks you can use P5 as an output uh, in which case you could drive five servos with this thing but P5 is often also set as the reset pin and if it's enabled as a reset pin then then it can't be used as an output. Um, if you only need up to four servos, easier to keep it simple and just use uh, just use the four servos and keep the reset pin. Makes it a lot easier if you're programming it with um, a USB ASP. Now the sketch for this uh the Arduino sketch for this program is very simple, but uh, the idea behind it is a bit complicated. So I thought I'd first explain what it is we're, we're actually trying to do. So the CCPM signal looks like sort of like this. Um, let's assume we've only got uh, four channels, and it's it's going to look a bit like that if you look at it on an oscilloscope. They're normally negative going pulses. Um, and you get a sort of marker pulse to start with. These are typically very narrow, you know, 40 microseconds wide or is that right, 40 or is it 400? Anyway, it doesn't matter, they're quite narrow and they're all the same width and the information that's uh, being encoded is the difference between the first pulse and the second one. So um, you get one, two, three, four, you get five pulses in a row if, if it's a five, if it's a four channel signal. Then you get quite a long gap 
and then you get four pulses in a row, that's the next frame. And typically uh, the difference between, uh, you can go either from the beginning edge to the beginning edge or you could go from the final edge to the final edge. Doesn't matter because the pulses are the same width. And that's that time there is typically about one and a half uh, milliseconds when the servo is at neutral and it goes down to one millisecond or just below and it goes up to uh, two milliseconds or just above and that would be the first channel and then you get the same for the second channel, the third channel, the fourth channel and then if there are more you get fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth and then you get quite a long gap and typically the difference between the start of the first frame and the start of the next one is about 20 milliseconds. Sometimes it's 18 and a half, depends on the manufacturer. But um, if you think about it, if you've got five, if you've got eight channels all at two millisecond spacing, that's already 16 milliseconds. This is why. Uh, you don't normally get more than eight channels of CCPM, and a lot of um, a lot of the cheaper receivers, like that orange one I was using, are only six. I think, I think six comes out of that. But in terms of what the sketch has got to do, uh, the pulses going out to the servo look like look like this. So, if if that's the first channel, if we extend those down a bit, the pulses that go out to the first servo is just the width of that first one and that would be the servo 1 and then servo 2 would be uh, like that and so on. So all the sketch has to do is uh, look for this pulse and when it sees it uh, well first of all it looks for the marker pulse, it sees a marker pulse it says oh okay the, uh, the next pulse I see after this long gap is going to be the marker and I've got to switch on servo 1. So it says, is it a marker pulse? If it is, switch on servo 1. And then when it sees the next pulse, assuming it's not a marker pulse, switches off servo 1 and switches on servo 2. Next pulse, switch off servo 2, switch on servo 3, keep going. Uh, I say the DigiSpark can do up to five servos, uh, after which it's going to switch all of them off. Um, then it waits for a marker pulse and then does it all over again. Now, you can do all this, I say, in about 20 lines of code. Uh, all you have to do in the sketch is wait for the low, then wait for the high, uh, and then say, well, how long has it been since we last did this? And you can do that how long thing using a timer. On the AT Tiny, you've got... Um, only 8-bit timers and you can set them to run at uh, the clock speed divided by up to 1024. So if we do that, if we run the um, if we run the uh, clock at 16 meg and set uh, the, the, the clock for the chip and set the timer to divide by 1024 it's going to run at 16 meg divided by 1024, which is uh, 15625 uh, counts per second. Um, now the longest pulse we should ever need to see is, assuming we've got at least four channels, we've got 20 milliseconds to start with. The minimum these gaps can be is a millisecond. So um, you've got at least one, two, three, four milliseconds to come off the 20. So that's 16 milliseconds. 16 milliseconds at that many counts a second is 250 counts. Uh, now it's, it's interesting to work that out. You've got to be sure that the time is never going to overflow or you could get false readings. And then if we look at... Um, uh, a typical um, uh, counts um, two and a half milliseconds which is 
longer than these pulses should ever be um, comes out at uh, 39 counts just over 39.06 or something like that um, so all the sketch has to do wait for these edges uh, has it been more than 39 counts since the last time say 40 counts um, if so it's a sync pulse if not it's an ordinary pulse act accordingly and then if it's a sync pulse we're switching on servo 1 if it's any other pulse we're switching off the previous servo and switching on the next one and that's all the sketch has to do which is why it's so short it's the sketch um, we've got a few um, comments up at the top and then if I scroll down a bit so you can't see all the comments that's it, you're seeing the whole thing there so if we just go through it and see what it's doing everything runs in setup the loop is just commented out it's just a, an empty loop because it never gets called so what happens in setup first thing we do is say no interrupts because we don't want any interrupts happening uh, causing problems then the AT Tiny's only got port B so all its six or five outputs are all on IO are all on port B I don't know why it's not port A but that's the way it is so we set all the servos off by setting port B to zero we set the data direction register to this that's binary and we're keeping the uh, P0, which is the rightmost bit there, as an input, and then the next five are all outputs. Then we set up the timer, so timer counter uh, register 0, timer counter 0, because uh, there are two in the AT Tiny, there's timer counter 0 and timer counter 1. We're setting timer counter 0, A register to 0, that says just keep running free, count all the way up to FF, uh, 255 then wrap back to zero and timer counter uh, naught register B we set to five which is, there's also a bit of setup in there but it's saying yeah run, run all the way up to uh, FF and then reset and the five part uh, means divide by 1024 so it'll increment every 64 microseconds. Um, then we're going to be sampling the counter using this previous count variable. So we just sample it to begin with. And then we enter this loop that's going to run forever. Now to get nice smooth servo outputs you want, you want the loop waiting for the edges to be as fast as it can possibly be. So this is done in inline assembler. Um, what it's effectively doing, you're saying while um, input naught is uh, what would it be? While input naught is low, a loop, and then then you another loop saying while input naught is high, uh, loop. But we're doing the same in um, assembler. So we've got this uh, loop A, uh, that's a sort of um, a label, a target. The instruction is skip uh, if bit in input register is clear, and then OX16 uh, is the uh, port pin B address, and naught is because we're using. P0, the first bit in that register. So if it's low it's going to skip and otherwise we've got a relative jump back to loop A. So it'll just keep whizzing between that loop A and the, R, uh, the S bit and the R jump instructions until that bit is low. So it waits for it to be low. And then we've got the same again uh, and this time saying uh, skip if bit in uh, IO register is set. So that's going to skip once the thing goes high and otherwise keep jumping back to loop B. So 
waits for it to go low, then it waits for it to go high again. And because it's in assembler, uh, those instructions take uh, just uh, two or three uh, uh, cycles each. So you, you're into five cycles of a 16 megahertz uh, um, clock. So it takes up to 0 0.31 microseconds, those two loops, which means your timing of your servos is going to be accurate to 0 0.31 microseconds, uh, which is uh, better than one part in 3000. So it's, it's right up there with the best quality radios. And then, OK, we've detected the edge, now we need to measure the time. So we sample the counter into current count. We take the difference between the current count and the previous count. And if it's bigger than 40, uh, that's a sync pulse. So we set port B to uh, the first servo output being a 1 and all the others being off. That switches the first servo on. And otherwise, um, this is a little sort of trick. We're adding port B to itself. So if you think about it, when it's if the first value is 2 in decimal, um, and then when you add 2 to 2, it switches on uh, the bit for number 4, which is the second server. And then when you add on the um, 4 to 4, the next time it'll be 8, and so on. So it goes 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 for all the servo output. Eventually it gets past 64, 128 if you had enough channels uh, and then it would go to zero anyway and switch all of them off. But of course on the AT Tiny there's only the first uh, five or six possible output bits anyway. Uh, and then you remember the the current count that you sampled because that's going to be the previous count for the next time and that's it. So that's the whole program. Um, best way to upload them, in my opinion, is to use a, a USB ASP. Um, and if you want to uh, use a USB uh, ASP with a um, with an AT Tiny, you just shove the wires on. So. Um, if I remember rightly, uh, MISO is uh, P0, MOSI is P1, uh, SCK is P2, RESET is P5, and then you connect up VCC and ground to the obvious pins. And then you just say upload using programmer. Oh, um, when you're programming the AT Tiny, uh, there's a thing called burn burn bootloader, which doesn't really burn a bootloader, but if you've selected, it does set the clock speed. So you set the clock speed to 16 megahertz, burn the bootloader, you only need to do that once, and then you'll uh, sketch upload using programmer. That's the way I do it. I think you could, for this one, you could use the normal DigiSpark upload and it runs at, I think it runs at 16 and a half megahertz. Uh, the, the DigiSpark by default tweaks the uh, the clock to run a bit faster than normal. Um, which it, it would still be fine. This sketch would still work uh, because the sync pulse check saying greater than 40, it would still be greater than 40. So that's about it. I'll uh, I'll stick the uh, the sketch such as it is. Um, a link to that in the description and uh, good luck with your CC PM to uh, servo output decoder. Thanks for watching.